the obsession to use and drink. Does this stuff make sense to you? So be weary if somebody's looking for a one-pronged solution to all these things. Let us start with God. Let him bring that deliverance, but don't always just end it right there. Is this making sense to you today? So who best imaged God? I think we can look only to Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. In, their, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Hebrews 1.3, he is the radiance of the glory and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by, his, by words of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. John 14.9, Jesus said to them, I have been with you so long and still you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? So ultimately, the solution to the cracked mirrors of our life is found in knowing him and loving him and spending time with him and getting to know him and allowing him to work in our life. Church, we need to spend the time to know Jesus. And if you don't know him and you're here tonight, it starts by entering into a relationship with him. And then like a loving father and a loving daddy, there's gonna be times in your life where he says, this area of your life, it really needs to change. I want you to better reflect me. And sometimes even if that hurts, we need to submit to him as a good friend who sticks closer than a brother and allow him to work those things out in our life so that we could better reflect him because we're created to worship him and to know him and to live for him and to reflect his glory to a lost and hurting world all around us. That's our privilege. That's our honor as his image bearers to go out there and be a witness to all the world. Listen to the words of Martin Luther as we begin to close. The gospel has brought about the restoration of that image. Intellect and will indeed have remained, but both very much impaired. And so the gospel brings it about that we are formed once more according to that familiar and indeed better image because we are born again into the eternal life or rather into the eternal hope of life by faith that we may, li that we may, li <laughs> that we may life in God and with God and be one with him would you bow your heads and close your eyes tonight? See, maybe you're a Christian and you're here tonight. But if you were honest, you still feel the weight of sin. If you were honest and you answered my question earlier, you know, what image are you reflecting? You just say, Eric, man, I'm not, I'm not reflecting Christ in the way that I really would like. And I need his transforming power to be at work in my life. You know, tonight might be a night where you just need to humble yourself before the throne room of God and just say, Lord, help me, transform me, change me. I want to better reflect who you are. I want to be that image bearer to a lost and hurting world all around me. You see, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. I'm wearing these red socks because a friend's in the hospital and she may even have wonders in her mind if she's gonna leave that place. And I know if she were here tonight as she shared with me yesterday that her greatest desire would be that we would look more like him or that we would find him for the very first time. So if you're here tonight and you don't know him, man, I just plead with you tonight, would you surrender your heart to him tonight? Would you repent? Would you turn from your sins and turn to the one who created you, who can make you whole? Tonight, if you're here and you just sense that you need to either dedicate or rededicate your life to Jesus, would you do me a favor? I'd like to pray with you. Would you raise your hand up real high if that's you? I see your hand and yours and yours and yours in the back. Would you do me a favor? Would you just stand up right where you're at for a second? Would you stand up? The Bible tells us that we can run as believers boldly into the throne room of grace to receive forgiveness. Would you rise from your seats for just a second? Just stand up where you're at. Man, if you raised your hand or maybe you didn't and you wanted to, I'd love to pray for you right here. I'd love to just stand in the gap with you and believe God with you for a great future in him. 
Let me tell you what will happen. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. What's going to happen is everybody around you is going to clap. They're going to cheer. They're going to be excited for you. Let nothing hold you back. If that's you, would you do me a favor and come right here to the front? I'd love to pray for you tonight. Make your way to the front right now. Come on. Love to pray for you. God bless you. Come on up. Hallelujah. Come on up, sister. Hallelujah. Come on up. I'm going to pause for one second. I'm going to, I'm going to pause. Would you just bow your heads for one more second? I, I got to believe that there are people here that are hurting. I mean, I just sense it, even numerically by the number of people who are in this room tonight. I mean, there's many of you whose mirrors are cracked right now. I mean, you're going through it and you don't see a way out. You, you need help from above and you can't just stay back, man. I'm telling you, you need to, you need to go after God tonight. Don't stay here and be hurting tonight. Let God touch you. Let him change you. Let him transform you. If you're hurting tonight, I mean, you just know you're hurting tonight inside. Would you do me a favor and raise your hand right where you're at if that's you? And I said, would you guys come on up too? I'd like to pray for you. Just come on up to the front. If you're hurting tonight, just come right up here. We're going to pray for you as well. Just make your way right up to the front. Give them a huge round of applause, would you? Come right up here to the front. Father, we all bow our heads and close our eyes, and I lay hands on those who are here tonight, not of any special power of my own, but of your power and your might and your glory, for you are the King of kings and Lord of lords who transforms spirit, soul, and body, who loves us dearly, and Father, who is at work in the life of everyone who believes, and I don't know if they're coming up here for the first time or the first time in a long time, but Father, each of them has expressed a desire of hurt or a desire of brokenness in their life that they believe that that only you could restore. So Father, we pray for them right now when we ask you to move in their lives and touch them and change them and transform them and make them whole and give them those clean mirrors that are accurate reflections of who you are, oh God. Father, remove the pain, remove the hurt. Father, remove anything in our lives that is not of you. Father, even if it hurts, we submit ourselves to you tonight. And Father, we say, do a work in us that only you could do. Father, you are the creator of our spirit, soul, and body. We were meant to reflect you. And Father, we give you liberty tonight to work in our hearts and our minds. We give you liberty to change us. We submit ourselves to you. We repent of our sins and we turn to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We submit our hearts and our minds and our wills and our emotions and our bodies. And anything unclean in our life that's not of you, we just lay it at your feet tonight, Lord God. We lay it at the foot of the cross and we let your word transform us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your might. Thank you for dying on a cross that we might have life. We put our hope and our trust in you and you alone. We live for you from this day forward in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. Would you give God a round of applause and these wonderful people a round of applause? Ladies, I would encourage you, if you go, Pastor Don and his team, they would love to talk to you and pray for you for just a moment. Man, would you just go with them for just a second? And if you're a family member, they'll be right back. They'll hang out with you for just a second and pray for you and just one-on-one. -on -one. Give them one more huge round of applause. God bless you guys. Come on, give it up for Jesus, people. And a sincere thank you for coming out and worshiping with us tonight. Hey, this Wednesday is a really big deal. We're having the Become a Kid Again event. It's for everybody, whether you have kids or not. The Children's Church team and others have gone all out to make this a wonderful night. There's going to be free food from Chick-fil-A. It's going to be a beautiful night, all starting at 7 p.m. I pray that you'll come out and join us and be here this Wednesday night because we all need to become a kid again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and become gracious unto you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Live your lives to make a difference in the lives of others. Have a great night, everybody. God bless you. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us here for one of our inspiring messages at Journey Church. 
If you live in the greater Jacksonville area, we want to invite you to come out to one of our weekend experiences. Our service times are Saturday night at 6 p.m., Sunday at 9.30 a.m., or 11.15 a.m. Or, if you would like to, you can join us online at any time watching any of our services live at journeychurch.org. We look forward